we just got this gut feeling that market supply dips whenever there are negative news. So of course, 2022, Black Swan year, this year mm. of Fox continue to have a little bit more tepid response, right? Have a look at this. This is the Property Group Property Listing Supply Index. Okay, so fantastic uh, job from our PRB research team. We took the supply in terms of the amount of listings that is put into the market. Of course, why we take Property Group is because they are the largest and most popular portal in Singapore. Mm. And... Most agents, if they're serious with their, their roti business, right, they will definitely have an account with Property Guru. So when they help their clients to list, they will list it on Property Guru. Okay. So when you see good years, 2020, everybody, all, everything was shooting up. There was a rise, a sharp rise in terms of the supply on the portals. Take note that ever since 2021, the supply starts to, starts to dip. But this dip was because everybody was buying up all the listings. But if you look at this, when we started 2022, if it dipped even further until now, and now our supply index is at an all-time low, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. But price still maintained, it still went up. But take a look at the amount of people that want to sell their property. Now, Josh, yes. um, maybe how our audience understand a little bit. When market is good, why do people want to sell? And then when, why is it that when market new seems to be a little bit more negative in terms of sentiment, why do home sellers pull out their listing from the market? Why do you think there's this phenomenon? I think uh, when the market is good, a lot of people will definitely say that, okay, it is a bull market now. I want to see how much I can capitalize. I want to see how much I can cash out. And then, of course, there are also a lot of other factors that they want to consider. Uh, for sure, is their age and then their income to see how much they can buy. Maybe what they are doing is also they are moving up to another asset class, maybe from HDB to condo and then likewise from condo to a landed property. So I think um, naturally when the market is good and it's very buoyant, uh, they will also want to take this opportunity to see how much they can cash out and then move into another asset class. Mm. Because when the market is good, that also means that their income should be very stable and then this allows them to kind of you know, leverage and to move into another asset class. Um, so, so would you say that this is a natural human behavior that when prices are going up, when mm. there's good news in the market saying that you know, quarter on quarter prices are moving up, Yes. All the more, all these positive news shapes our behavior as a home seller that, okay, yes. now market is good. I want to put my property in the market and then I want to sell and move bigger. Yep. So that's a natural human instinct, right? Correct. Uh, Grace, what do you think? Is this a natural human instinct? Okay, I think partially, yes, natural human instinct, but it's also <laughs> a very logical move. Mm. So it's like, okay, when you see the market, you hear positive news and then uh, the natural instinct is that, okay, I also want to be part of this real estate boom. Yeah. I also want to capitalize on the gains while uh, prices are moving up and then I will uh, put my uh, listing on the market. But when the news is you know, not so positive, maybe uh, mm. the sentiments of the market are not so good, uh, why there could be a decrease in supply, right? yet the pricing still holds uh, strong, is because sellers uh, in Singapore especially are unlikely to compromise on price. Right. So let's say if I hear that the market is uh, not doing well, that uh, interest rates are high, buyers are more conservative, uh, uh, you know, listings are, more, are not moving as fast, maybe I might choose to take a pause and wait for um, the... the I'm, I will not in any way compromise the price. Mm. So uh, I would sell my property for, for a lower a price. Lower price just yeah. because uh, the yeah. market sentiment is not that good. Mm. Yeah, that's why pricing still continues to hold strong mm. uh, while maybe some sellers are taking like, a pause. Right, so um, you are right. I totally agree with you because uh, I think the natural human instinct is that when I see good news, it means that my perception of the market is that there's a lot of buying power in the market. Try to sell above valuation, take advantage of the, the buyer's sentiment. Mm. And hopefully with this, I cash out and then I can buy something else or I buy bigger, I move bigger, right? Mm. However, this also sort of um, has a flip side perspective, right. right? Because if we were to look at this, okay, so, so this, this is a natural thing that always happens. And um, by the time... Next year, if let's say we flip over the papers, if Fed reduce interest rate, mortgage rate drop to let's say example two percent, for example, then this this graph will start to show up again. People will start to put their property in the market. They want to exit, move bigger. But then, if we were to look at this, this presents a very strange phenomenon because, um, my perspective is that if you are planning to move bigger, you should take advantage yeah. when the market is actually on a more turpid or stagnant level. Yep. Because let's have a look at this. Like basically, the buyer's mindset 
has to be different from like the seller's mindset. Well, actually, there are, there are like two parts of the coins, right? So like uh, point one mm. is that all this is the, the market situation created the behavior. So yes. that's mm. one, right? So like a lot of times people go by the herd mentality, right? But if we want to do, you want to have like the most optimized probably decision, right? Then we have to see how we can take advantage and go contrarian to yes. what the general crowd behavior yes. is. Mm. That's right. So I found, I found the chart, right? So this one we just shared during our recent webinar. So, so you see, the contrarian mindset is that um, this particular client that came to us, he bought a new launch in 2008. And uh, that new launch, that two beta, it was a huge two beta because it was before the 2013 era. Mm. He bought it at $1.8 million. He was 30 years old. 15 years later today, he is in a huge dilemma because he's 45 years old, but he's doing very well as a professional. He's, he's doing well because uh, he wanted to move to a different property. And then his question to us is that, Melvin, should I sell my property? But if I were to sell today, it's only worth $1.6 million. And uh, the dilemma comes because all of us on a human perspective, yeah. we don't want to go for gatherings, right? When we meet our uh, poly or GC friend or uni friend, and then they say, hey, I heard you recently sold a property. Oh, then you don't want to tell them that, oh, I lost 200,000. And this is like, I bought 15 years ago, 1.8 million. Now, 15 years later, I sold 1.6. And I haven't even covered my buyer stamp duty and, and bank interest. Mm -hmm. And you tell your friends that you sell 1.6 million. And then, of course, my question to him is that, I ask him, why do you want to sell? So I would, I would say that the contrarian mindset has to be activated when you look from a perspective of which season are you in. So this mm -hmm. season... He is in a season that his ability to move to a landed home. So, so basically, when we go back to just on that chart, right, is that if he were only to put out his property later on in twenty fifteen, in sorry, in twenty twenty five, and let's say the market recovered, by the time the landed home that he's aspiring to has also moved up, well, like maybe in in a higher quantum leap to oh. five million dollars, and then he would have lost more. He would have covered back his two hundred thousand, but he would lose another five hundred thousand for this landed home. So, mm -hmm. I think. It really depends on the season and the contrary mindset has to be activated based on your current season. What do you think, wrong? Generally, I will, my advice to my clients is to look at the bigger picture in the sense that don't just look at your individual holdings. Like for example, this property that you're holding on to, right? Is it, uh, has it been profitable or unprofitable? Right. Mm. Because you want to look at the bigger picture, right? Is uh, if today I look at a loss, right? Do I stand to put myself in a better position for gain down the road? This is what we call by like switching portfolio, just switching yeah. basically your funds. So think of it like if today you have bank account A and they are paying you less than 0.5% interest and you know that another bank is going to come up with 3% interest. So it does make sense for you to do some switching in that kind of element.